look real sexy. I do? Yeah. You got the legs for this. Yeah? It hangs long. I just wish it was shorter. <laughs> Let's go explore and check out the guys on board. I want to be near a cute one when we go through a bridge. No, you don't. A tunnel. Right again, <laughs> If the glove don't fit, we gotta quit, you know? If, 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 if it ain't right, we can't convict them tonight. And if the thing ain't real, we gotta go back and do it all. <laughs> one of these days, a perfect man's gonna come along who is intelligent, handsome, and has great character. Boy, look at the ass on that son of a <laughs> It's ABC's 50th anniversary bloopers celebration with your host, Dick Clark, and all these stars. Tim Allen, Tom Bosley, Drew Carey, Billy Crystal, Jamie Lee Curtis, Danny DeVito, Michael J. Fox, Tom Hanks, Mary Lou Henner, Ron Howard, Gabe Kaplan, Don Knotts, David Lander, Christopher Lloyd, Penny Marshall, Donnie Most, Craig T. Nelson, Ozzie Nelson, Rick Nelson, Jason Priestley, Patricia Richardson, John Ritter, Roseanne, Soupy Sales, Peter Scolari, Courtney Thorne Smith, Suzanne Summers, Danny Thomas, John Travolta, Jerry Van Dyke, Damon Wayans, Anson Williams, Cindy Williams, Robin Williams, Henry Winkler, and many, many more. With special guest stars Jim Belushi, Joyce DeWitt, Judd Hirsch, and Marion Ross. And now, your host for ABC's 50th anniversary blooper celebration, Dick Clark. Thank you and good evening, and welcome to a very special edition of Bloopers. Tonight, we are going to celebrate 50 years of ABC bloopers, and that means you're going to see the great shows, the great stars, and those special moments when uh, things didn't quite go the way they were planned. So let's reach back into the vault and take a look at five decades of ABC bloopers, starting with this one. And it goes way back to the 70s in a very popular show called Mork and Mindy. And as you know, that's the show that unleashed Robin Williams on the unsuspecting public. Now, there was, always, uh, there was always a script written for Robin, but most of the fun started when he started to ad lib. And here's an example of Robin doing a parody on one of those 70s infomercials. Zenomatic, the product that will not maim or deface your kitchen vegetables. Zenomatic, the exciting new product. How many times have you wanted to peel an onion? Well, now you can't because Zen Zenomatic won't. <laughs> I blew it again. <laughs> Slow down. Make the lines count. <laughs> you can hit it, you can throw it, you can even kick it because it won't do nothing. That's right, it won't do nothing. And that's really... But let's move on. <laughs> Zen Nomadic! From the people who brought you Frozen... Um, <laughs> one second. <laughs> yeah, my drugs are taking effect. <laughs> uh, can I go back one thing? Because I, I forgot one really funny line. It'll be really great. <laughs> <laughs> you can push it, you can kick it, you can throw it across the room and it will not do anything. That's right, it won't do nothing. That's just like old man river because anytime... <laughs> you can kick it, you can shove it, you can throw it, you can hit it. <laughs> I think we've lost it. <laughs> <laughs> now, another huge hit of the 70s was Laverne and Shirley. Now, here's a scene that features Penny Marshall as Laverne and David Lander. He's the actor who uh, played Squiggy. Now, in this outtake, they're doing kind of a, a, a takeoff on a soap opera, very dramatic, very passionate. Of course, it didn't stay that way very long. I know, my little sugar tart, but first, we must come up with a plan. my little sugar tart but first we <laughs> I know my little sugar tart but first we must come up with a plan
Now, of course, when we um, celebrate 50 years of bloopers, we've got to include some of the more current shows, too. So here's one from John Ritter's new hit, Eight Simple Rules. Now, this one features uh, John, his uh, son on the show, played by Martin Spangers, and special guest star Jason Priestley. Now, in this particular scene, Jason decides to do a little ad-libbing. What? I'm proud of you, son. I'm always proud of you. That took a good-sized set of plums to come forward like that, <laughs> I'm always proud of you. That took a good size set. <laughs> we got it. We got it now. Help us now. Come on. Come on. Rory, I'm proud of you, son. I'm always proud of you. That took a good size set of coconuts to come forward. <laughs> Hey, we'll be right back with more classic bloopers. Don't go away. Next, never-before-seen Happy Days bloopers with Ron Howard, Henry Winkler, and Marion Ross. You know, one of the most popular shows of the 70s was a show about the 50s, Happy Days. Now, it's a show that has a lot of heart, not to mention a lot of laughs. And we talked recently with a very special actress from that show. Here's our visit with Mrs. C herself, Marion Ross. <laughs> Marion, thank you so much for being with us. Well, you're very welcome, Dick. Yeah, you are, without a doubt, one of America's all-time favorite moms. Now, is that the real Marion Ross? No, of course not. I am an actress. Mrs. C was just one role that I played. Now you want to sit up straight, darling Dick. You want to slouch. Cause... <laughs> no, the truth right. is, I I'm not at all that maternal. Well, that's kind of interesting. Anyway, I was watching the Happy Days bloopers last night, and they are great. Well, I hope you weren't sitting too close to the TV. That's not good for your eyes, you know that, do you? I know, but what's more important is these first couple of bloopers feature you, and they have never, ever been seen before. I know, and I wish that they had stayed that way. <laughs> well, what are you, the truant officer? Tony, please, now just get, you're being... <laughs> here, talk to him here, maybe. Hey, hey, right, nothing I will I tell you. Yes? Tell us, tell us! <laughs> Let's start over, let's start over. <laughs> Now, this next blooper, which features you and Tom Bosley, is a, a, a kind of a sentimental scene. Right. You know, Happy Days was a show with a lot of heart, and this scene takes place on the Cunningham's 25th anniversary night. We were just getting started to be a little nostalgic, a little romantic. But as I remember, it was usually uh, the kids that would break up the uh, Cunningham's romantic moments. Well, not this time. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. Let's go to sleep. Oh, I should clean up. Oh, you can do that tomorrow. You know, we were doing the same thing uh, 20 phew. years ago tonight. Did you sneeze then? No, but no. in the room. <laughs> Of course, Happy Days uh, would not have been Happy Days without the man who played Fonzie, ah. Henry Winkler. Ah, yes, what a terrific actor, and what a fabulous man, and a fabulous role. I mean, he was always uh, calm, cool, and in control. Well, not always. Just have a seat. The Rumble tonight is officially declared a tie. Huh? The hangout will be dry. Do you have it? Do you have it? Hey, I'm the best. But in the entire time you've you've known me, huh? Have I ever? Have you ever? I will do this again. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about Ron Howard. Ah, whatever happened to that kid? <laughs> Of course, we all know he's uh, become one of Hollywood's top directors, but did you see any sign of that back then? You know, all, all great directors, they know their scripts backward and forward, and Ron certainly was like that as an actor most days. Hold it, dollface. 
How'd you like to do yourself a little favor and come to a swing and bash over at my place? Oh, a luau? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, we didn't say a luau. <laughs> hey, we'll be eating at, uh, I haven't got the slightest idea. <laughs> Now, directors have to have a, a good sense of uh, staging and movement. Did Ron ever show you that sort of thing? Oh, definitely. You know, when the script called for Ron to get from point A to point B, he got there no matter what. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Marion, thank you for sharing your bloopers with us. You are a uh, wonderful, versatile actress, but I hope you won't mind if I think of you always as my, uh, my favorite TV mom. Really? Well, then how come you never call? You never write. Months go by and I <laughs> don't right. hear from you. Right. Right. I'll do better, I promise. Marion Ross, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what a great lady. Now, we've got a lot more coming up on our anniversary party, so come on back. When we return, Freaks Company bloopers with John Ritter, Suzanne Summers, and a special visit with Joyce DeWitt. Right now, it's time to take a trip back to 1977. Now, that was the year that John Ritter, Suzanne Somers, and Joyce DeWitt starred in the all-time favorite Three's Company. Now, from that classic hit show, please welcome the actress that played Janet. Ladies and gentlemen, Joyce DeWitt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice Make yourself you. at home. Now, thank you. Thank you ever so much for bringing these bloopers uh, from Three's Company. Oh, well, you are very welcome, Dick. You know, until I watched them again, I'd forgotten some of these moments myself. Mm, that's to be expected. You have to have almost a photographic memory to recall everything. Yeah, well, as this blooper will show you, Dick, my photographic memory has often been uh, just a little bit out of focus. <laughs> You know what really turns me on? What, 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 what? <laughs> what, 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 what? <laughs> what, 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 what? Well, the funny thing is that my bloopers were usually not forgetting my lines. The problem was that I enjoyed my lines too much sometimes. Sometimes I found that what we were doing was so funny that unfortunately I would enjoy it as much as the audience. I mean, take this scene. Jack and Janet are talking to a character played by one of our all-time favorite guest stars, Jeffrey Tambor, whom we suspect is a mental patient, but we don't want him to know that that's what we're thinking. Take a look. <laughs> So, Tom, how are you? Nuts. Now, this next scene is uh, kind of unusual for Three's Company. It's you and John Ritter sharing the same bed. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is unusual. In this episode, we were pretending to be married to fool my mother. And, well, sometimes John is just so disarming that you are absolutely helpless before him. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Just in case your mother comes back. <laughs> she cracked up. but she really cracked up. Uh, <laughs> so I guess that's a, that's a screw-up, because yeah. she cracked up. <laughs> no, I, I understand this next group of bloopers came from uh, Suzanne Summer's private collection. That's right. That's right. Suzanne has what she likes to call her personal gag reel. It contains many of her bloopers over the years, and here's a couple of her very special moments that she was kind enough to share with us tonight. Don't you have any consideration for the two of us at Stop all? Stop it! Listen, Stop please. it! One of the reasons I left home was because no one thought I was old enough to... to, um... <laughs> well, what's wrong with saying I'm very pleased to meet you? Does anyone know? <laughs> Okay, Dick, here's a trivia question for you. 
Ready. What was the name of John Ritter's character on Three's Company? Well, as a fan of the show, I happen to know it's Jack Tripper. I mean, that's an easy one. <laughs> well, not for Suzanne in this particular episode. <laughs> Michael, uh, this is John Ritter. <laughs> well, let, let, let's, let's talk a little bit about John Ritter. Oh, absolutely a joy to work with and totally unpredictable. I could have guessed that. <laughs> and of course, he had this habit of always breaking me up, like in this particular blooper, which features Don Knotts and Jenny Lee Harrison. Now, the plot has John pretending that he's his identical twin brother from down south. The scene has John exiting the apartment, and when he opens the door, we're just supposed to see a little subtle fog effect. And what happened? Well, you're about to see for yourself. And poor Jenny Lee and I, well, we're just done for. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye. 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 You can't go anywhere tonight. Well, I got to. I got to catch the next flight home. In this fog? Fog? Yeah, it's thicker than pea soup out there. What? The airport's <laughs> Out there. <laughs> now, what, what about that time that John made that, that grand entrance? Oh, yeah. This is really a mini-parter. You see, it was important to the scene that John enter the apartment and not close the door behind him. But he just couldn't remember not to close it. So what you're going to see right now is about the fourth or the fifth take. <laughs> I got it! I got it! Jason Defarge's review. What's that? Terry. Shut the door. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> And of course, every time that we reset to shoot his entrance over and over and over, we were all teasing him mercilessly. So in this entrance, he decided to get us all back. Hi, honey, I'm home. <laughs> I said, Dick, he is wonderfully unpredictable. Oh, you can say that again. Thank you, Joyce, very, very much for the bloopers. Joyce DeWitt, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next, Laverne and Shirley, Billy Crystal, Tom Hanks, and John Travolta. You know, in uh, doing this 50th anniversary salute, we discovered some treasures that we really had no idea even existed. Now, Take, for example, this little scene I'll take from Laverne and Shirley. It features Penny Marshall, as you would expect. But take a look at who's playing the role of her boyfriend. Okay, you're a wimp! Oh, cream oh, puff! Oh, okay, you happy? Cream puff? Did you say cream puff? Oh, I just said oh. that. <laughs> what is it? Oh, yay! Yeah. Oh, am I sorry? Oh. <laughs> Well, that, of course, was Jim Belushi, who is the star of According to Jim, and all these years later, he is still committing bloopers. Take a look. Cheryl, your grandmother stayed here for a month, and I didn't complain once. Please, you did nothing but complain. Well, then you should uh, be an example for me. And it's time for you to be the best person. And I think it's time, I, I, I think it's time that you take off that purple robe. <laughs> And, and, and give it up, give it up for, for myself and, and the crew. <laughs> Come on, let's give it up. Ladies and gentlemen, from the set of According to Jim, please welcome Jim Belushi. Hey, Dick. You know, over the years, this network has had lots of family shows. And they put together all kinds of combinations, like they've had functional families, dysfunctional families, extended families. 
upended families. Three guys and three kids, two guys together, two girls together, two girls and two guys, one guy and two girls, two guys dressed as two girls, one girl, one alien, and two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. I've got a bunch of bloopers to show you, Dick. Starting with a very rare clip of the family that started it all, Ozzie and Harriet. And here's the beautiful part, I don't even have to set it up. Ozzie took care of that on his own. Take a look. Hi. You know, uh, sometimes the things that happen accidentally turn out to be funnier than the things that are planned. Uh, we thought you might like to look behind the scenes with us and watch a bit of unrehearsed and completely accidental humor that occurred during the filming of tonight's show. Uh, uh, first of all, to refresh your memory, here is scene 10C, just as you saw it in the picture tonight. Now, uh, that was take four. And now watch the same scene, take three, and keep your eye on Wally. Three. Right action. Come on, Wally, get in the closet. Here. Oh, come on, Wally. Oh. <laughs> now, in 1977, the most controversial show in all of television was Soap, a satire on the sexy subject material usually found on soap operas. And even before it went on the air, the network received thousands of protest letters, but the show turned out to be more than just controversial. It was truly funny, and it helped along some of the busiest careers in show business. Amongst them, uh, Billy Crystal, Robert Guillaume, Richard Mulligan, Catherine Hellman, and so many more. And here's some bloopers from Soap, starting with a scene featuring actor, ventriloquist Jay Johnson, Rennie Temple, and uh, a very young Billy Crystal. That man is arguing with a doll. Homosexuals and puppets. What kind of a place is this? Listen, I think this conversation's over. You're touching me, young man. That's right, you were not invited in, and now you are being with a locked door. <laughs> She's a disgusting person, and nothing would thrill me more than to be rid of her forever. And now they have to move in with my parents because Danny doesn't have a dime. Hi. Hi. It's Billy's line. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Drive safely, huh? This uh, next outtake features uh, one of the biggest stars in the world, Tom Hanks, who used to, uh, well, dress up like a woman every week on his show, Bosom Buddies, which was uh, one of his first big breaks. And this particular outtake deals with uh, Tom playing a practical joke on his co-star, Donna Dixon. You know, Sonny, how when some people first meet, they, they don't always act like who they really are now. Maybe it's because they're shy or embarrassed or, or just plain stupid. Oh, Buffy, I mean, everybody does that. I mean, let's face it, I mean, everyone's a little insecure. Yeah, well, I'm secure. I'm strong. And I know that when I tell you this, we're gonna look back and laugh and laugh because, Sonny, I'm half latex. And I don't know how to live with it. I really don't. Is there something you can do to help me? What are all you laughing about? Do you think I like living like this? Look, we're on at 9 o'clock now. We can do this. Come on, we're an adult show now. <laughs> of course, on Bosom Buddies, Tom and his co-star Peter Scolari also got to dress as men. Now, in this scene, Peter is wearing nothing but a towel. And uh, it deals with the fact that every time Tom sees him, Peter flashes him. I don't mean his smile. If that's the way you want to keep your hands off my Victrola. Fine. And another thing, I'm getting tired. <laughs> Stop. Did you see what he did? All right. 
<laughs> if that's the way you want it, keep your hands up. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. All right. If that's the way you want it, keep your hands off my Victrola. Fine. And another thing, I'm getting tired of seeing... <laughs> if that's the way you want it, keep your hands off my Victrola. Fine. And another thing... <laughs> That's the way you want to keep your hands off my Victrola. Fine. And another thing, I'm getting tired of seeing your underwear drying from the shower rod. Oh, you have a... <laughs> He's cheating. He's cheating. He's not looking at me. Now, on Welcome Back, Cotter, which had a wonderful cast of characters. John Travolta, by the way, made his debut on that show, as did uh, stand-up comedian Gabe Kaplan. Uh, on Cotter, they had this scene where Mr. Cotter's wife set up Arnold Horshack for his first date but uh, John, who played Vinny Barbarino, came on with a, why don't you say, kind of an unexpected line. What's with Arnold? Ah, uh, nothing. Just today he became a man. <laughs> Thanks to your wife. Horshack's been doing it with your wife. Hey, we've got 50 years of bloopers to choose from, so you know there's a lot more to come. Don't go away. Still to come, Michael J. Fox and Drew Carey, plus some of the rarest bloopers you'll ever see. You know, one of the most generous stars over the years uh, with his bloopers has been Drew Carey. And uh, here's a brief look at some of the highlights, or lowlights, uh, in this case may be, from Drew's show. Uh, we'll start with one that features guest star Jamie Lee Curtis. All right, Sue with an X. This is Mimi. Oh, f <laughs> Now, in this scene, Drew is supposed to say he has some concerns about you. Because uh, he had some concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bell asked me to talk to you because he had some... <laughs> Mr. Bell asked me to talk to you because he had some, some concerns about you. <laughs> Mr. Bell asked me. Uh, Mr. Bell asked me in here to talk to you because he had some concerns about you. Mr. Bell had me here to talk to you because he. Had some... Now, one of the most successful comedies in the late 80s and early 90s was Coach, starring Craig T. Nelson and Jerry Van Dyke. Now, these bloopers from that show, they were just great because Craig and Jerry got such a kick out of each other. Uh, take this blooper, where Jerry is supposed to say, in the spirit in which it's intended. Well, I don't know what's so embarrassing. I mean, if people want to celebrate and throw free food at us, that's a beautiful thing. And I, for one, I'm going to eat it in the spirit in which it's a Nintendo. Say <laughs> 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 Nintendo. <laughs> in which it's intended. <laughs> well, I don't know what's embarrassing about it. I mean, if people want to celebrate and throw free food at us, that's a beautiful thing. And I, for one, I'm going to eat it in the spirit in which it's intended. <laughs> Well, what's embarrassing about it, Aiden? I mean, if people want to celebrate and throw free food at it, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and I, for one, am going to eat it in the spirit of which it was intended. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's Craig's turn now. He's supposed to say the Japanese word for goodbye. Sayonara. Who's not? Then I went out of this program. I went out of this job. I'm leaving, Howard. I am Sayonara. <laughs> You're not serious. Oh, I am very serious. I'm not serious. <laughs> For you. Well, of course it's for me. Find out who it is. <laughs> He's on the can. May I ask who's calling? <laughs> it's Mrs. Rizendo. 
Why did you tell Miss Rizzardo I was on the can? Well, what am I going to tell her? I don't know. You got a pole in your throat. Never you mind. Think? Just give me the phone. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to take it in there. Hayden, just uh, don't stand up. It's Mr. Swisher's. <laughs> <laughs> Spin City was the popular Michael J. Fox comedy that uh, premiered in the 90s. And in this episode with Richard Kind, Michael has to say this little uh, tongue twister. Uh, I pre-ordered a seven-layer custard cream-filled cake. <laughs> okay, ultimate man. Did you take care of the cake? I pre-ordered a seven-layer custom cream-filled cake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ultimate man, did you take care of the cake? I pre-ordered a custom cream-filled cum cake. <laughs> Ready? You rule! You the king! Top dog! Beat cheese! You, Mike! You! Now, here's a group of bloopers that go way, way back. Uh, Make Room for Daddy, starring Danny Thomas. That show actually started on ABC in 1953. And it had, uh, what would you say, a, a very diverse cast. Now, many of you know that Danny was of Lebanese descent. And one of his cast members, Sid Melton, was Jewish. Now, th this never came up on the show, except when Sid spoke in Yiddish. Ah, let's face it, Charlie. We can't live without him. You're right. You know us guys, we don't realize women are romanticists, sentimentalists. You gotta keep telling them you love them. Yep. Love is of man's life a thing apart. Tis a woman's... Oy vey. <laughs> the anatomy is a woman's oy vey. <laughs> now here's a scene from Make Room for Daddy that involved a great big group of trained dogs. Now these dogs were trained to stay in one spot. These dogs decided to ad lib. What? Oh well, I'd enjoy it. <laughs> there go At two wandering age, off. You know, oh there's nothing There like goes the poodle. Oh, living extravagantly. <laughs> Now, remember, these dogs were supposed to stand still, but now it's every dog for himself. Now, look at the little girl, Angela Cartwright, trying to hold on. Sorry, Danny, this shouldn't happen to a dog. All right, now here's a blooper bonus that goes back to one of the all-time great comedies, McHale's Navy. Now, the show was set in World War II, and it had a big cast, including Ernest Borgnine, Tim Conway, uh, Joe Flynn, a lot of others. Now, here's a very rare moment when practically the entire cast is waiting very impatiently for the director to say, action. So they decide to amuse themselves. They, they don't even know they're on camera. When I love you, baby, baby, please don't go. Yeah, I love you, baby, baby, please don't go. Hey, 
got a lot more gems coming up. Don't you dare go away. Next, Taxi Bloopers with Danny DeVito, Mary Lou Henner, and Judd Hirsch. One of the most popular and honored of all comedies uh, was Taxi. We're very proud to present you with some great outtakes from this ABC classic comedy, along with some recollections from one of the members of the all-star cast. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Judd Hirsch. Hey, thanks, Dick. Uh, you know, Taxi was a wonderful experience, and uh, one of the reasons was the great writing. That's why, as an actor, I tried to interpret those words just as the writer intended them. Also, there's what I call license for wishful thinking. I have no right being here. I, I don't even want to be here. In fact, it'll probably be doing new me no, but you go, I can't even tell you this. <laughs> Elaine. Worst part is I didn't even get dinner out of it. <laughs> Usually when a guy dumps me, he takes me to a nice place. Hey, I tell you what, let's do. I'll get the guys together and we'll go. Uh, we'll go to some, uh, you know, funny-looking joint, which is uh, around a corner, and have a uh, couple of beers, and then we'll all jump on top of you and everything. Yeah. <laughs> now everyone remembers the character of Reverend Jim, sort of spaced-out ex-hippie. Of course, Christopher Lloyd, the actor who played him, was nothing like that. Uh, or was he? Well, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. Boy. Well, what do you think the odds are that with that... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's a scene where Christopher Lloyd had a kind of a poignant moment. He's in an empty courtroom and he decides to walk up to the judge's bench when no one's around to see what all that power and authority feels like. But uh, Danny and I had a better idea. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know, Danny DeVito took so much joy in playing that mean-spirited tyrant, Louis. But sometimes he just got under my skin. And my reactions, I'm afraid, were sometimes not for public consumption. Rita, come in here. Stay there, I'm coming down. <laughs> Alex, I got problems with my love life. Get the out of here. <laughs> <laughs> now, this next blooper is one of my favorites, and I'm not even in it. Now, it features Danny and a wonderful character actor named Lou Gus. Now, Lou had what you might call a hangdog expression, and Danny couldn't look him in the eye without watch when Maxie started when Maxie when Maxie started driving the George Washington Bridge was dental work now look Max look at it in this way you're not really old. you're not really old you're just middle aged forever <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I mean, I don't really want to say that Maxie is old, but uh, when he started driving, the George Washington Bridge was dental work. <laughs> ah, but look at it in this way, Max. You're not really old. You're just middle-aged for a scene. <laughs> But look, look at it. <laughs> look at it in this way, Max. You're not really old. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Dick, thanks for inviting me to be part of this 50th anniversary celebration. If you've proven one thing over the years, it's that good shows may come and good shows may go, but bloopers go on forever.
<laughs> Good night. Judd Hirsch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Judd, very, very much. Man. Don't go away. we got a lot more still to come. Stay tuned for one of the most famous bloopers of all time. Tonight, we leave you with a true gem from a legendary children's program, The Soupy Sales Show. Now, that aired on ABC from 1955 to 1962. Now, you need to know that uh, part of Soupy's regular routine was to have the doorbell ring, after which he would open the door partway and do a little comedy routine with an actor who was hidden from view. Now, on this particular show, the crew totally surprised Soupy, who had already rehearsed the door scene with one of the regular cast of characters. But during the show, the crew pulled a switch, and the person they sent to the door was a totally naked woman. <laughs> now, I mean, she was hidden from the viewers, of course, but not from Soupy's sales. So remember, this was live television, and Soupy's gonna open the door, and right before his eyes, there's a woman with no clothes on at all. It's an all-time classic. Be careful. That's Now remember, this is live, so Soupy has to keep going. Now there was a camera that recorded the other side of the door, and here's what Soupy saw. It's been a great 50 years, and uh, one thing's for sure, we've only scratched the surface. We're going to do this again real soon. For now, Dick Clark. So long. Join us next week for part two.